we're working on. Wow, our technical difficulties are everywhere right now. Isn't it nice if somebody was desperate to my Oh, we did have this by ordinance on it's Cindy's fault. <laughs> so while we're waiting, Ms. Steck, I have a question. Um, when I look in the budget and there's nothing in Fairway Estates and there's nothing in RDA, what? It's that in the book that I just received. Yeah, um, yeah, you received it. Is it just the pack? The other? Uh huh. Okay. It is. Yeah. And then, do we know where Council Member Worthen's packet went, Mr. Anderson? <laughs> From last week, her stuff because she doesn't have this. So, <laughs> Denise, can I ask one more question? Because this is going to go into several of the RD, uh, the RDAs. When a RDA expires mm -hmm. in a tax year, mm -hmm. how long do we have to spend the money after the tax year ends, or does it have to zero out at the same time the tax year ends? No, you have um, many years afterwards to okay. And then what? What, you want to. what does it take to renew the renew that? uh that those bounds reactivate or re yes reset kind of feeling tax entity so there there is a provision under covid that you could extend that um but essentially you'd have to enter into new agreements with the uh the other taxing agencies if you're collecting an increment okay um but all of the so under the the tax increment agreements have sunsets on them so they they're not uh perpetual obviously and then the same is also true for the project areas they also have expirations right now i was just wondering what it would take to extend a project area but what that would mean is the new tax increment document with all the taxing entities if you're collecting tax increment yes so we have two that aren't you could extend those uh between the agency and the city uh, unilaterally, and then if you were to collect tax increment at a future date, uh, the other agencies would have okay. to be under the amendment. Okay. So with that, uh, you'll see uh, the intent, all of this information again is in the budget book, but I just put it up at the very top for each of these project areas, the collection period uh, when it ends. So you kind of have that uh, at, the, at the top of mind. So project area one uh, obviously is is about to expire ending balance. You will also see that that's obviously in the budget book and um, no active agreements in this area. This area in the box is not context that you have in the budget, but I thought it might be meaningful for you. Again, um, we're we're looking at the base tax year and I think you're all familiar probably with how the uh, the budgets work for the project areas, but when we're collecting tax increment, we get the tax differential, the, the tax increment that is generated beyond what the initial tax base is set at. So whatever those property values are, when you trigger collection of your tax increment collection, that is your base tax roll. And you get the, uh, the incremental per the agreements that you enter into, you get to collect taxes on everything above and beyond whatever that base tax uh, role was. Make sense? Okay. So in this box for each of these project areas, it simply shows um, over the life from the time it was uh, created to today or till 2022, at least assessed values, um, it generated, it, it, it went up in value. All of those properties within the geographic boundary of this project area went up uh, almost 39 million. Next. Before you go. Yes. Go back. If we can hit the reverse button. 
what do we what do we have planned for this area i mean we've this has been an rda for many many years yes it doesn't i i I'm, it doesn't appear like we're we've done anything it looks like we're going to do some sort of with the budget this year we're talking about spending about half a million dollars in infrastructure. My guess, my first question is, what is that infrastructure? And the second question is, uh, what what is our plan for that four million dollars over the next couple of years to to make this corner better? Great question. Um, and let me say, I can answer whatever questions you have with that, the, the quick answer to that question directly is um, infrastructure improvements had been contemplated for this project area, uh, most likely associated with the development of that uh, remaining undeveloped parcel uh, to the north. So that's just south of the, the cemetery. Um, there is a traffic signal that is contemplated for that location. So that is one thing and then potential investments or collaboration with a developer for that north site. Having said that, the very last slide that I'm going to be presenting on basically says we are going to be going through a strategic planning process is to work directly with council to, to brainstorm all of those items and make sure that we're going through this methodically and, and strategically. Um, so I'm happy to answer those questions for each of the project areas, but in the interest of time. So just clarification, uh, collection period ends uh, New Year's Eve 2024. We don't have to have necessarily spent everything beyond them. We can still go beyond that. We can carry a balance. There's no rush to get us spent, correct? That is correct. For, for the time being, I'll, I'll just make you aware. Um, last legislative session, House Bill uh, 557, I believe, was proposed to put a five-year sunset on any funds remaining um, after the expiration of the uh, the collection period, it, at which point that would all go to housing, uh, affordable housing funds. I expect that that's probably going to come back next legislative session, but we don't know. For now, there's no, there's no uh, time horizon. There's no sunset. Um, go to... Project Area 2. Um, again, this, this uh, project area you're all familiar with and have had some discussions about it. The collection ends in 2025. Uh, you can see there that uh, this went up in value uh, a little over 23 million. Uh, there's no active agreements in this area. Next slide. Project area three is expired. Um, so not much to say with this at a zero balance, uh, it had a moderate uh, increase in value over the life. Next slide. Right. So go back to that slide. If the fund balance is v zero and the RDA project is expired, why do we continue to carry it in our budget book and on all these slides and those kind of things? Great question. And we can, and I assume will, uh, via resolution, get rid of this one so we can get it out of the RDA. There's no real need to carry that I'm, that I'm aware of. Um, it just as a general best practice, Usually a good idea to keep, if there were any agreements, keep it for a couple couple of years after everything is wrapped up. That way you don't end up with uh, stranded transactions if anything comes back. Next slide. Um, this is one I know that uh, each of you have expressed uh, interest in, in finding ways to invest the funds. Uh, this one's been a pretty significant increase in taxable value, 55 million uh, over the life of the, the project. 
um, three years in remaining budget authority for this one. Just the two updates for you. One, HMART is moving forward. Uh, poor Paul, I have him call or email uh, HMART every two weeks. It's on his calendar. And uh, the update last week is they will be open by October. That's their expectation. Even though it looks all boarded up, they are doing work inside. Um, and then the other property, the Spratling property, which we've all seen many projects come through. I am working with an investor right now uh, to make private investment in that property. We've been working on site plans uh, and holding meetings with, with staff internally for, a, um, for uh, an NHL regulation ice sheet which would serve a couple of different uh, ice hockey organizations for practice land. And I know it looks crazy. You think it can't fit, trust me. After all of the projects that we've seen come through that nobody has liked, we've really dug deep to find a site plan and we're, we're getting there. So well, something to, to look forward to. Next slide. Um, this one has about uh, four years remaining. Uh, for those of you that are familiar, familiar with this project, it's on both sides of 7800 South, uh, where the Vasa is, and then the McDonald's and the All Star Bowling. Uh, this has been largely successful, not much in the way of vacancy and um, uh, it's increased in tax value, taxable value about uh, 40 million in a few years remaining on that. Next slide. Uh, this is one you're all familiar with. Again, did expire in 2020 directly across the street from City Hall. Um, total increase in taxable value, a uh, little over 17 million. It did not generate a ton of uh, funds in tax increment. Um, and the remaining balance is uh, earmarked for affordable housing. Uh, if we move forward with the city center project uh, as part of that TOD, I expect that we'll have to enter into another agreement in addition to exploring some other tools. Next slide. Uh, Bingham Business Park, this is essentially uh, Boeing. Uh, huge increase in taxable value here. Um, no active agreement in place uh, for this any, any longer. Um, uh, and you see what the, the balance is there. Uh, this will be the last year for that. Oracle Data Center. Yes. Oh, so Dannon, Dannon is closed and it's been closed for uh, what it was, yeah, quite a while. Um, the, no, that's fair. And I went back and forth on whether or not to include this. I forget when. The other one closed in 2019, and I think this one was maybe 2016. Um, yeah, good catch on that. Um, the Oracle Data Center, uh, again, large increase in taxable value. Uh, there was an incentive, uh, which was wrapped up in 2019. That last payment's been made. And uh, there is a balance, uh, but again, this project area is expired. One thing to note with this, uh, we're anticipating a large investment in this area through private funds. Um, Oracle's been going through a change. They're actually selling this property to a private data center owner and leasing it back from that data center owner. And uh, the data center owner as part of that agreement would have to make a large investment in additional data center uh, capacity, for, again, for Oracle. Oracle doesn't want to hold these assets anymore. So that's uh, just a, a note. And I think a uh, success for the project area. No question, longer... question not about that. Um, are they using a water efficient method there? Yes. So our communication has been consistent with all data center users who continue to show interest in West Jordan. Uh, if you cool with electricity, with a closed loop system, we're very interested in having you. If you're interested in cooling with water, then we're not interested. Thank you. And balance is good in everything though, right? Yes. Uh, next slide. Oh, one more. So yes, what is the 3 million slated for? Uh, no 
investment directly planned within the project area because it was a single project area. Mm -hmm. um, there are multiple options. Generally, you want to invest within the project area if you can, but if as long as you show a nexus to the investment and how it's going to benefit the project area, you can make um, agency-wide uh, investments. And many of these, that's what we'll do. That's why we've made investments in water tanks, um, in sewer, um, in streetscape, because they have an agency-wide impact. So is that what some of this is for? Okay, thank you. Next slide. Uh, Fairchild, this one's a, a little bit uh, different, but the collection period ends in 2030, um, seven years remaining on that. Uh, you see the balance there. There are two existing incentives here. One is a pay PayPal rebate of personal property tax. Um, and then the other one is uh, a rebate of municipal energy tax uh, to aligned energy. And you see the timelines on those. The change in marginal value just shows the investments that have been made and kind of the, the success with those investments, what, what impact they've had on the, the base tax roll or on the, uh, the future tax roll. What question on that one. Are they, are they still looking to put uh, a restaurant or something in the front of there? Yes. Yeah, so still their plan? We're in communication with them to, uh, to do pad sites in the front of, uh, they don't need that large parking lot. They're they using right it for now. staging. <laughs> yeah. yep. They're using it for staging, but at the completion of their data center development on this site, then we'll transition to uh, development of, of pad sites. Uh, and well, Costco, things. Trader Joe's, you know, steakhouse. Yes. I <laughs> Might have, be a little I small for Costco list. unless they go up, but. <laughs> I have, I have your list. Local if we don't have a Costco. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma'am. As you're talking about the pad sites, I think that, I mean, the sign was up, the sign is now down, um, but the, there was a sign that said pad sites. My suggestion is if, if, the, if the goal is to put pad sites out front, and let's get it reason. Let's get let's get aligned energy to apply and get that area rezoned now, so that we don't have to talk about rezoning. And you you know where I'm going. I do. Uh, I appreciate that that comment. Um, we're giving them room to operate and and do what they do best right now. Candidly, they won't own the property. They will sell the property. We'll work with them oh, okay. and a developer, or potentially purchase the property ourselves if that's an interest. Uh, but uh, we will be thoughtful to to be a step ahead of the development. Okay. I, I just want to make sure we're proactive there yeah. and not behind the power curve. I appreciate that. Next slide. Um, Southwest Quadrant, you're all familiar with this. We have not uh triggered the tax increment yet uh, there is a process to doing that but we are working with lewis young roberts and burningham on a strategic plan for economic development and the rda and the first two things that i've asked them to look at are this area and cra2 which we'll get to in a moment so i'm going to ask a question with this eda area with pioneer there was some housing that was supposed to be in that, correct? Um, Are you talking about in the area or with the incentives? I'm talking about there's housing in the area. Okay. There will be housing in the area. And yeah. um, I just want to make sure that there, I'm just going to say it. I don't want any housing incentives in there. Okay. I mean, that's just a personal opinion. I don't know where the rest of the board sits, but um, unless it's, un unless this area generates some good tax revenue 
that we could maybe do some affordable housing or something. But at the end of the day, what I don't want to do is, is uh, give tax incentives to both businesses and um, housing out there. And this land becomes useless because all we've done is, is funded, uh, given away a, a whole ton of incentives. Uh, I, I just don't think that's appropriate. The, the idea of this particular area in, in particular is to build the economic base of the city. And we've got to be super careful on uh, incentives there uh, that we're not giving away the, literally because it was a farm. We're not giving <laughs> away the farm uh, just so we can build buildings. Well, I appreciate that. And as we move forward, we'll, we'll certainly have the opportunity to discuss that. Uh, I, I do happen to agree with you. And we'll be thoughtful about that as we move forward. Uh, next slide. Um, All I want is some good news and what mixed juice is coming next. We've got our Starbucks. We have our apartments. What's next? Um, screening for parking. <laughs> Were you here for that conversation? We dealt with the screening on the parking. Come on. I was I'm on gonna, the planning commission. I'm going to try to move past this slide as quickly as possible. I was actually on the school board. But... Uh, Paul, Paul is actively working with the development, uh, the developer, and they are having conversations about additional commercial. Um, I, I don't uh, recall exactly what that is off the top of my head, but they are working on it. And, and just an FYI uh, for tracks, people don't know where they can park to ride tracks there. So when you're working with them, maybe the signage could be a little better and okay. and there really could be some parking for tracks riders. <laughs> I thought that's what the parking garage is for. It's a split parking garage and it's hard. If you don't know where to enter for public parking, good luck. Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not user friendly. We'll take those comment, well, comments back to the developer. This CDA was the, the I'm going to say it, this CDA is the biggest disaster we've ever had in the city. Um, so <laughs> you, you, you live off 13th West, right? <laughs> With that, you know, I. That, that that wasn't a development. Okay, so okay, how largest development disaster? Can I clarify that? <laughs> so I will uh, give an open invitation. I don't know if any of you have toured any of those products out there. Um, I've seen the. Do you I've mean seen... gone to the apartments? Correct. Yeah, I've been I used there. to live there, and it's a nightmare now. Is it? No, sorry to hear that. Okay, next slide, please. <laughs> but board member Whitelock is right. It's about time. I mean, we have, this has been going on since, I mean, oh my heck, how many years? And we've got a $20 million subsidy on this particular development. And we've still seen no commercial development. And 2012, 2012. You know, honestly, I'll just say it. That's nonsense. And it's not, it's not much our fault. It's, it's as much the developer, it's the developer, but there, there's got to, you know, I'll just leave it at that. Um, CDA two uh, is the other uh, along with EDA five that has not triggered the tax increment uh, collection. Um, again, that's the first one, uh, the first two that we'll be looking at with Lewis Young. And uh, the two notable projects in that area, First Truck Ranch, which you're all aware of, uh, they are going before the Planning Commission on the 16th for an amended site plan. So economics of uh, auto dealerships have taken a, a turn for the worse. They're still moving forward. Um, but uh, they, they basically uh, decrease the square footage of their building slightly. Um, I've seen the plans, it's still a very nice building. It's still a big building, still 60,000 square feet um, and uh, still nice dealership. And they also change the size of their lot, which adds more space to the other dealership lots. 
um, overall net benefits, but they are moving forward. And then uh, it's anticipated, which we'll all discuss at a future date, but um, when we do trigger the tax increment for that, the kind of apple of everyone's eye is the property across the street to the north of 90th, that 30 acre parcel and uh, in doing something innovative with that. Uh, so there's opportunities to invest in, in that uh, parcel to the north. Um, at one point we talked boats in this area. Is there, is that discussion still going on? We talked about boats. Yeah. So truck ranch is also boat ranch. So there's truck ranch, boat ranch. They'll, they will have a component of their dealership that is a boat dealership. Okay. But it won't be separate. It'll be one building. Correct. Thank you. How, so, so the amended site plan doesn't affect their incentive agreement. No, it doesn't. Um, the the there's still that sunset that triggers the reappraisal after three years, and so I suspect that that will happen before the other dealerships come in. Has the sale of the property off of whatever that was, eighty six hundred South, has that gone through yet? Um, to, with uh, where's that uh, creek i had to stop thinking about the name uh that's good question I, i'll turn it on that you may be aware of the loss of um ryan peterson passing of ryan peterson with that uh it's been delayed peterson peterson development such base with us still very interested still moving forward it just slowed the closing on that all right next slide so please. That so, Denise. That what that means is is that if this hasn't closed yet, what the annual budget that shows a sale of land for two point five is that it, that's anticipated in that budget year starting July. Is that what we're saying? Okay, because if it had been if it had closed now, it would be in this year's budget. We do an amendment. Is that right? Okay, just want to make sure I know where I'm going with this. And I believe the 2.5 contemplates the sale of the truck ranch property. Did we put the other property in the budget too? Uh, and I think the reason why is because the closing date of that, the agreement is in place, but there's still a due diligence period and that may sneak into the next uh, fiscal year. Um, uh, CRA project uh, area one, uh, another one that uh, you're all probably familiar with, kind of this corner had a number of big box stores that uh, went vacant or reduced the footprint that they were using. So there were two uh, pretty innovative and very modest uh, incentives that were made that I think were pretty successful in bringing in users. Uh, they do add to the base tax or to the uh, tax taxable value, the assessed taxable value over the long term, but more importantly, they prevented major blight from, uh, from really grabbing a hold of this area. Next slide. And then that takes us to really the last slide. Again, the RDA strategic plan, you'll all have an opportunity to engage. I expect that that uh, will kick off here at the end of May. And uh, there's really two objectives with that. Uh, the R, this RDA strategic plan component of that. One is to work with the board to catalog all of the potential investments that could be made and to work through those with you. And then the other uh, objective is to explore triggering TIF in those two areas we mentioned. Thank you. Okay, so it's my turn. Um, we're going to get into the, your budget amendment, which you have coming before you tomorrow, as well as um, the budget for fiscal year 2024. So we can go to the next slide. Oh, that were there. No, where are we? Okay, I haven't done. Oh, we're on a different one. Sorry. Uh, 
Um, this is a history of the tax increment that, um, that has been collected year by year. Um, just wanted to kind of give you an analysis as to why you've seen it like spike and then kind of come down a little bit as some of those areas have closed, which was discussed just a few minutes ago um, by Mr. Pengra. So you can see that the RDA number six just closed in fiscal year 2021 and EDA three closed in 2022. So we're collecting about the same tax increment in 2024 as we were collecting in 2018. Next slide. Uh, we're going to bring to you a budget amendment. I, I'd anticipated flipping those slides, so I apologize. Um, the budget amendment that's going to come to you, we're going to adjust the uh, adjust to actual. We've received all the property tax in the RDA right now, so we need to adjust our actuals up a little bit. Uh, we were also able to capture interest on our reserves in about $220,000. Uh, we have a transfer from the general fund. This was... Um, as I was working through the agreements, um, realized that the energy taxes is receded in the general fund. It needs to be transferred to the RDA and then paid out to the, to the development. So this is a request to transfer that, those funds from the general fund to the RDA, um, and then we'll rebate them to Aligned Energy um, or PayPal, whichever one. Which one is it? Pay no, it's Aligned Energy. Aligned Energy. Um, we have... a. a Another transfer from the general fund to restore the reserves in two areas to a zero balance. Um, that's about $50,346. 50,000 of it was um, sales tax revenue that was never transferred from the general fund to make the RDA whole for a sales tax rebate to Sportsman's Warehouse. Um, and the $346 was um, to make another area whole and it zeroes it out so that it can close. Some of the incentives also um, that we need to increase the budget for. So these are expense increases. The other ones we just spoke about were revenue increases um, is the PayPal incentive. The payout for that was um, double what we budgeted. That's good and bad, right? We, it was great that it came in like that. That PayPal incentive is actually um, personal property tax. So I love this agreement because it didn't take away my regular property tax, which still comes to the general fund. So the growth in that area still comes to the general fund. Um, the personal property that is invested in that building um, is rebated back in the incentive. So um, their personal property tax paid this year was a lot higher than it was last year. So this is to increase the incentive payment out. So that incentive payment is dollar for dollar? Dollar for dollar. Yep. Paid, paid out. Um, and then the, and in the budget book at the top of the header of that section, it will tell you exactly how that's paid out and calculated. So it's real easy for you to see it. Um, and then Bangor Station has also an incentive for the project that I hear you're loving now, um, was $88,000 in excess of what we budgeted. So we do owe that to the developer. <clears throat> Administration, we're adjusting as well. Um, it is a percentage of the actual tax increment collected in the RDA areas. The other areas don't have an administrative overhead that's allowed um, to, pay, to be paid to the general fund. So we'll be bringing $13,000 back into the general fund out of the RDA. Um, the differential is about $300,000 and um, it's in the benefit of the RDA. Um, I, I, we had, I know we had mentioned about this Bangor Station incentive. Um, Corbin, were you gonna give us a report on the Bangor Station and how they were compliant with that? I, I mean, not tonight, but at some point in time in the future, were you gonna do that? Yeah, we'll schedule it. I'll, I'll visit with you after we'll schedule it in the future. Okay, next slide. Um, a budget overview, just comparing 2023 to 2024, our property tax revenue, um, the sale of land. So this is 2023 column is not our budget, it is our estimates. So we did budget this land to sell in 2023, but we know that it is not going to do so until 2024. So we have a zero there right now. Um, interest revenue, we don't budget for that, but it did come in at about $166,000. Um, we have some studies that uh, are in and we're going to continue with that strategic plan for the RDA. So you're seeing that budgeted for 2024. Um, administration is a straight calculation off tax increment. The improvements, um, we have budgeted them for two fiscal years. Um, this year, um, Isaac got his teeth in them. So we're super excited about him managing these projects. One of them is um, working with UDOT. UDOT already had an improvement plan for Redwood Road and streetlights. 
And that was one of the things that was high on our priority list as well. So we're going to be using that money, having that money going a little further than we thought it was going to go originally. We thought we were going to have to carry that project pretty much on our own. Um, Isaac's partnered with UDOT. UDOT is going to make improvements at their basic level, and we're going to up them to what we believe would be our level. So it will be a betterment agreement that will come to us. Um, so that's great. And then we're also going to be, um, and we are in the midst of designing um, new city signage. So some new entrance signs, a new sign of outside of city hall, something that's going to really show our city as, as being in the 21st century. Um, are, are we planning on cleaning up around those entrance signs? Where we will be cleaning those areas up as well. Okay. So Isaac has um, some money that he's able to do that with. Awesome. When when you say like cleaning up the sign in front of city hall, is that also replacing? Let's just well, say replacing. Okay. Replacing. Does that also include an upgrade on the message board? Yes. Good. One that we can we really use. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, and then we are also contributing in the redevelopment agency towards a cemetery tank. Um, and that would be in the areas that are existing that mostly have expired so that we can continue to um, improve those areas. It's a direct nexus to redevelopment in those areas with this water storage. So 3 million of the, um, some of the areas are contributing to that. Other areas are contributing to streetlights. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that is from EDA number three, the Oracle site, right? That's contributing to the water reserve. The other RDA areas are all contributing to the streetscape projects. Um, and then the transfer in is the $50,000 sales tax rebate for sportsmen and $250,000 energy tax rebate. Before we leave those streetscapes, yes, um, it says 13 to 1700 West, 9,000 South, uh, 550,000. What is that? What does that betterment look like? Um, those are, again, it's a continual streetscape air project. So it's going to be the nexus of the city in general in some of those older areas. So the streetlight project is all down Redwood Road. Mm -hmm. And then um, the um, city signage is, Isaac is gone. Huh? I don't know where this I think is. that one's the walls you were referring to. I think that includes some money for walls as well as streetscapes, um, streetlights, and some uh, the Hopefully sound walls are in the story. CIP budget. Oh, they're in CIP, uh -huh. not they're this? In the, they're in the CIP budget. It's just Redwood Road. It's streetscapes along Redwood Road and street signage at city at strategic city entrances. So that's just the area. On page five, when it says 13 to 1700 West, 9000 South, streetscape improvements, 37% of project costs, $550,000. Am I getting a new entry sign for that amount of money? Am I getting flowers? Am I getting, what am I getting for? Um, I, I can get you or work with Isaac to give you a report as to what, um, what, it what is. exact improvements will be done around Redwood Road and in that area. If it's just Redwood Road, I'm, I'm having heartburn over that. I just need you to know that because in this city, no. we have two I-15 exits that go through our city really. And 9,000 South is one of them. So to me, that's an important entrance into our city because you can go from I-15 to the Ochre Mountains pretty much. Exactly. And he's aware of that. So he's working on those. So he's identifying those projects. And, and those it's too. also important to a couple of property owners that are close to the Jordan River there that have, have had discussions with me. So I just, if I could find out what that's really paying for it, that'd be great. We'd be happy to get Thank you. Thank you. For sure. Um, the ending balances for overall for the redevelopment agency in all areas are right at about $13 million for both um, our estimates at ending year this year and for next year. Next slide. <clears throat> um, again, what um, Mr. Pengra mentioned, we have the land sale for Truck Before, Ranch. We have the, oh, sorry. I, I'm going to go back to go the back same sorry about um, that. list of improvements. Um, we, we, you also, as we deal with that, um, I know council member Jacobs talked about this a little bit, but we, we really need to look at and find out RDA number two and what streetscape improvements are on 7,800 South between 13th and Redwood, 13th and 16th, um, particularly on the East end, 
where we have some really where we don't have some of the most beautiful pieces of property oh, in this city. I see what you're looking at. Thank you. Um, that is the description of the area. That's not the description of where the actual improvement will occur. That is the actual area's description, like where the area is located and who's con what they're contributing to. It is not where the actual improvement will occur. So I need more information before I can give you a budget answer. Okay. <laughs> a we lot more detailed information. I agree. Okay. So the streetscape project is primarily on Redwood Road, and I can get you where the city entrance signs are going to be and the improvements that are going to go around those. It'd be cool if we could also have a look at what those signs might look like. Um, I'll ask Isaac how far along there. I don't know. Do you Thank know? you. Corbin, do you know how far along the signs are, the sign design? The sign design process is just getting started. Okay. There could be. Sorry, a, there should be a concept of some sort, right? There will be, but they're just barely starting the process. I just have nightmares of a float that we once upon a time had that appeared that was a bunch of UFOs at a float preview party. And I just, in order to say, yes, I want to expend funds, I need to feel good about what I'm expending funds for. We could amend the budget. Um, and we could bring this back as a budget amendment if you would, if you so choose as well. I, I think I want some more information too, just because yeah. RDA number two, the description is 13 to 1600 West. Uh, and if we're throwing $210,000 from that RDA to Redwood Road. Remember the direct nexus though, like Redwood Road feeds into all of these yeah, RDA but, areas. But so what, I'm, what I'm saying is 70, I, I'm going to go back to a comment that council member, our board member Whitelock just made is that 7,800 South is an entrance to the city. And yes, there, there, there can be money and we've got money to, to do on Redwood Road. But if we keep focusing on Redwood Road, the entrance to 7800 South that Council Member McConaughey's talked about, Council Member Whitelock's talked about, uh, 70th South entrance, the 90th South entrance. If we continue to let those just look ugly, then Red Redwood Road, yeah, it's a well-traveled road. But unless we unless we can figure out, I, I guess my my problem is. Yeah, we can we can better Redwood Road, but unless it gives us a good Main Street fill, it's not worth the money. Well, remember, we're partnering with UDOT on that Redwood Road project, so there will be additional funds that we're putting towards those entrances yep, to the city. Right, and I get that, but the fact of the matter is, is we're putting money from the RDA from 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 for the from the area that's on seventy eight hundred South, from literally Gardner Village to Redwood Road. And if we're ignoring that so we can transfer the money to Redwood Road, we're doing that area of the city a, dis a disservice. You see where I'm going with we're that? We're doing it in addition to the entrances. So we'll get you like an overview of where we intend to make improvements, but we don't have the design. We're not all the way through the design process and we can include the board in that for sure. The other thing that's running through my mind as you're talking about that is right now we're only talking about RDA funds. We also have the streetlight utility fund. I'd be curious to see how those how those overlay. Um, I also know we can't we can't do everything all at once. Okay. I'd very much like to see um, as you're driving north on Redwood Road from South Jordan into West Jordan, the change becomes very apparent. I'd like to fix that and make it more of an apparent change when you go from West Jordan all brightly lit to Taylorsville or Benyon. Um, but we've also got 7,800 South, the East West that's right here, just North of our city hall. That looks absolutely fantastic. Um, we also have though, like 3,200 3, West, uh, the neighborhood over there thinks of that as the, an entrance to the cities are coming off the hill by holiday, uh, Southbound on 32 and there's almost no lighting there at all. So there, there's a lot that needs to be done. I know we can't do it all at once, but I would very much like to see how the RDA ties in with some of some of the others so no objection for me with what's been heard I, I i just like to see it all good thank you yeah i think that's that's the appropriate use for the board is for you to oversee and see what kind of impact you can make okay next slide um and we've gone over these agreements but just to kind of let you know the aligned energy we're in year five of ten 
that was just paid. Um, it's a rebate of 50% of the municipal energy tax that's received in the general fund paid out. So I've estimated that, um, but uh, it should they be paying more energy tax then they'll get 50%. Um, the PayPal is 42% of the personal property tax that's paid. Like I said, we keep the real property tax, which is very good for us. Um, this is year four of 10 that's been paid out to PayPal. Um, and then Jordan Valley Station is a 20 year not to exceed amount. We've paid five of 20 years out. Do we have something that shows the rough dollar amount of those incentives? Uh -huh, they're in your budget book right at the top of um, the page. So the total incentive and how much has been paid out are right there. Thank you. Next. Um, this is oh, going over those one time improvements that we just discussed. EDA number three will be contributing towards the cemetery water reservoir. Certainly not enough to build, the, build it, but it'll be about 30% contribution. And then RDAs one, two, four, and five will be the streetscape improvements with the city entrance areas and the redwood signs um, in coordination with UDOT. I think this is the last slide, right? Oh, there we go. Um, and then again, the last slide is really just giving you the ending balances of each of the areas, as well as the expiration dates. Um, certainly Mr. Pengra's slides are much more inclusive um, and probably more focused on each area, um, but in some notes saying, you know, whether they were expired or whether there's some low income housing money available in there, um, what incentives were paid out, because you're gonna see EDA fives in the negative, $1.7 million. Well, you kind of go, why is it in the negative? We haven't even tripped it yet. Um, well, we did give Amazon an incentive um, ahead of tripping that area. And then um, Copper Hills Market, the CDA number two, we're holding um, quite a bit of land there that is that will be sold over time and recover that funding. Um, so, and then if you see nothing, that's usually because that's just a straight rebate. So all of that um, area is just really a pass through um, for the activity that's occurring. Okay. Any questions about the budget and um, or areas of discussion? This is your time. Um, and we'll be bringing the budget amendment to you tomorrow night, I believe. And, um, and asking you to consider adopting the budget. You could, if you are uncomfortable with the improvements, you can amend at that time before adoption, or you can um, let the budget go through with the stipulation that we bring back to you the details. It's up to you. Council or board member Whitelock, you look confused. I'm not confused. I just don't want to uh, accept this as my tentative budget yet when I haven't even had time to realize. I, I don't know that I'll have time to read all of this. No, tomorrow. no, no. The redevelopment agents. Oh, the RDAs. The RDA uh, okay. is getting it at RDA and um, MBA are going to be for tomorrow. For tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah. So we've already gone through the whole process. Perfect. I just wanted to say thank you for all the hard work on this and making it very clear for us to understand and see and read through and figure out the questions we need to ask. Um, the hard work is very much appreciated and noted. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for all, all the hard work. Oh. All right, if there are no other questions or comments on the RDA work session, that is the last item that we have uh, for for this particular meeting. So I would look for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> motion by board member Whitelock, second by board member Green. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. We stand adjourned until tomorrow.